Shalom and praise the Lord, everyone. Thank you for um, joining class. Esther, Daniel, Nedel, Jennifer, Sam, Daniel, and Sanjay, thank you for joining class. We'll um, begin class. Also, thank you for um, thanks to all the in person students for um, being part of this course, for your enthusiasm. It's good to look at faces and uh, teach rather than just an empty screen. Um, and also welcome to our e-learning students who will be listening to this lecture later on. Um, we'll begin with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you. Thank you for this day. Thank you for this morning, O oh Lord. And thank you for that we, you kept us alive and for your love, your mercy, O oh Lord. And now we are going to uh, study, O oh Lord, Teach us, you lead us, you guide us, O oh Lord, and help us to understand, O oh Lord. You keep your wisdom, knowledge, and understanding so that we can understand and we can apply this in our life, O oh Lord. You help us, Lord. You are telling and man also. You help us, Lord, so that you can teach us and we can uh, grab that word, O oh Lord. Thank, thanking you, Lord, that you are going to help us, O oh Lord. And ask this prayer in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Good morning, Lucy. Uh, welcome to class. Thank you, others, for joining class. Welcome, all of you. Uh, last week, we began looking at chapter 8. We began studying chapter 8, fellowship. Okay, And um, we looked at this whole idea of how we are actually kingdom builders right thank you a kingdom builders and what do we mean when we say kingdom builders that all of you all of us are kingdom builders what do we mean can you pass the mic so that people can answer in-person students can also answer what do we mean when we, we say that we are kingdom builders any answers we studied this last week what is our understanding of this word kingdom builders? In-person students, online students, what are the answers? Come on, can we have some answers? What do we mean when we say we are kingdom builders? Okay, we are doing everything according to God's will. Okay, we we'll take the mic and speak so that our online students can hear what do we mean when we say kingdom builders we studied this last week uh, we are a co-worker with god and we are helping uh, to build the kingdom of god on this earth. okay we are co-workers we co-work partner with others to build god's kingdom okay yes we are co-workers with god what else When what do we what comes to your mind when you think about kingdom building? Kingdom building is not just building our own visions, what God has called us to, but it is also how we can build what God has given and trusted to us, our vision, uh, the calling that He's placed in our life, and how we can partner with others in extending God's kingdom through the vision that he has given to us, okay? It's not about promoting my name. It's not about promoting my church. It's not about my rule, my dominion, but it's about God's rule, dominion, and it is about his kingdom, okay? So sometimes when God entrusts to us a church or a ministry, we think that, you know, it's like our business. You know, we guard it. We protect it and we are only doing that. That's important. But it's also important that we use what God has entrusted to us to see how we can partner with others, partner with the local church or other local churches and how we can transform the city, how we can extend God's kingdom in the uh, city and in the nation. Okay. Uh, Sanjay says it's strengthening the body of Christ. Yes. Also, what is kingdom building? Kingdom building is beyond, looking beyond our vision, our church, and 
ministry and how we can use what God has given to us to bless others, right? How we can use what God has given to us, the vision, the gifts, the resources, how we can use that to strengthen and build others and extend God's rule and reign um, in the lives of people. Also, kingdom building is co-working with others, partnering with others, okay? And when we partner with others, what should be our mindset? What should be your mindset, kingdom mindset? Can we have some answers? What should be your kingdom mindset when you partner with others? Online students, any answers? We do. Yes, it should be about, thank you, Sanjay, it should be about us and not just I and me. It's not about what I will get, what I will receive, how my ministry can be strengthened, how my ministry can go grow, how, what is the benefits for me, but it is how I can be a blessing to others, how I can be strengthened myself and how I can strengthen others, how I can encourage and build others okay so that should be our mindset when we do ministry or even when god has entrusted his own vision or uh, his own calling in our lives a ministry that he has given to us we need to always see that in a bigger framework what is a bigger framework what is a bigger framework that we need to work in How do we work in a bigger framework? How do we look at it? Good morning, everyone. Please wakey, wakey. Can we have some answers? So when God gives us a vision, God gives us our own ministry, we need to look at it in a bigger framework. So what is a bigger framework? What is a bigger framework? How we can use what God has given to me to build his kingdom, to extend his kingdom. That's why Jesus said, you know, thy kingdom come, that will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Okay? Sorry. Okay, so John Blessy says kingdom building looks beyond his own individual vision. Yes, you look beyond your own individual vision and you see how you can extend God's rule kingdom here on earth. Okay, so even as we are thinking about kingdom building, we look at what are some of the important things to keep in mind. Okay, now if you are building your own ministry, then your view is very, very narrow it's about i me myself but we're not looking about how we can just you know build our own visions our own calling but how we can build use what god has entrusted to us to build god's kingdom here on earth okay so we look at a few important things what are some of the things that we need to keep in mind even as we go about kingdom building like um, he said, we need to co-work or co-partner with others, right? So we need to relate to other men and women of God, okay? Other women of God in our own city. Uh, why is it important to relate with other women, men and women of God in our city? Because all of us are doing the same work. What is the same work? We are building the kingdom of God. Yes. What else? We are sharing your vision. We are sharing your vision with others. Okay. Why is it important to relate with other men and women in the ministry? So that we can complement each other, we can help each other, we can share our resources, we can share our gifts. Are online students there? No answers today? What's happened? Can we have some uh, answers from the online students as well? Please unmute your mics and speak. It will be nice to hear 
your voices and in person students please take the mic and speak can we have some ideas and um, some you know um, uh, answers here okay we also need to build friendships and relationships okay uh, how do wh why is it important for us to build relationships and friendships with other ministers in our city with other men and women of god can you take the mic please and speak moses because we can clear misunderstandings and we can heal broken relationships yes we can clear the misunderstandings that are there between leaders we can heal broken relationships okay when you relate with other men and women in the ministry usually when pastors and other ministers other leaders of christian organizations when they relate with each other how do they relate what is their level of relationship or what are they basically talking about only their ministry yes yes they're only talking about their ministry right but is that only something that we need to talk about how is your ministry how is everything going what you should do what you shouldn't do what else should we how else should we relate to each other uh they should relate in uh, unity sorry get through they should relate with each other in unity in oneness yes they should relate in unity and in oneness okay yeah you were telling something sorry to interrupt you no no please say you take the mic and speak what you were saying is very important yes it's like uh, when uh, most of the time when uh, two pastors and all a servant of christ they meet most of the time they discuss about their ministry but a minister of god most uh, in his personal life also well like too much struggle is there too many things are there so most of and we did not discuss it if we, if the two persons are meeting if they discuss it each one can pray for each other for their ministry what is happening in their personal life so like uh, everything will go nice yes it's important for us to share our lives share our successes share our problems share our difficulties they might have gone through what we are going through they can share their experiences their learning experience they can give us tips they can encourage us like lucy says they can encourage us uh, we can talk about our goals you know sometimes we have a vision and a calling that god has given we don't know how to go about it we can go to other men and women of god who are already established themselves in the ministry we can discuss with with them we can learn from their lives they will tell us hey you can go about doing it like this avoid these things don't do these things so when we when we hear and learn from them you know it uh, actually encourages us as like lucy says you know it we also complement each other and uh, we encourage each other we can learn and you know it will save so much of our time and energy save so much of us going in the wrong path in the wrong direction because they've already gone we can learn from their lives you can also share your experience hey i went through this this is exactly what i did this is how god helped me so it's good to relate with each other it's good to uh, build bonds and uh, relationships okay uh, sanjay says a collective goal or vision as members of the body of christ to serve in the great commission yes you know we are all having one purpose that is to extend and build god's kingdom and how we can encourage strength share our resources what we can do what we shouldn't do all is very very uh, important so you know we can also pray for each other like he said you know we can have other men and women of god in the who are leaders ministers in the city leading organizations they can pray for us what happens when there is unity and oneness among leaders of various christian organizations and pastors in a city what happens what happens when there is unity in relationship between pastors in uh, uh, various churches in the city and also among christian organizations sorry sonia yeah, yeah. there's strength strength is built up and there's unity yes. which is very important 
for Christians to be united, even though there are slight uh, differences in uh, doctrine. Yes, very true. Yes, there is a uh, strength, there is unity that yeah. is there, and all. Sorry, Lucy. Yes, go ahead. We are unshakable, ma'am. Yes, we are unshakable against the uh, enemy. Yes. The kingdom of God grows in a faster way. Yes, and we will also see a greater release of God's power and anointing. Do we have, we have an example of this in the Bible? Example of how people were united in one and what was the result? Do we have an example of this in the Bible? Uh, sister at the Pentecost. Yes, at the when Pentecost. When all the okay. gathered together, there was a, a strong power of God released. There was anointing. There were uh, different tongues were released to the people. And so many miracles took place. Yes, thank you, Gertrude. Yes. Okay, when uh, an in-person student is saying when Peter was in prison and all the people gathered, and they were praying together, you know, the angel of God comes and releases them out of prison. The great example is about the early church, right? The early church, they were all one. They were even selling all their property, everything coming, giving it to the church. There was unity and oneness. And that is why we see great signs, miracles and wonders and people think why isn't there such move of god in our city or in our present day situation and they think it all happened was only meant for the early church and not for our time and age but it's not true why is it not happening today because there's no unity there's no unity among the leaders and churches just imagine if all the churches come together the power and the anointing of God will just flow in such a powerful way that, you know, even our city can be transformed. And it is a reality, you know. Uh, we've seen when, when people in our city have prayed, uh, there has been changed. You know, there is no criminal cases, no people, uh, you know, uh, no, uh, no um, uh, um, addictions in that city. There was a city like this. There was so much of alcoholism there. Crime was so high. P Christians in that city prayed and there was a change. And it was amazing because the crime had stopped. There were no um, people who were uh, uh, addicted to alcohol and the shops even closed. It was such a powerful witness and such a powerful testimony. So that is what is important for us, you know, to come together and build unity and oneness. Is it important? Is it possible for us with all our different denominations, doctrines, the way and style of worship? Is it easy for us to come together and worship God in unity and oneness? What do you all think? Give it to Nelson. The mic. Quickly, you have to pass the mic. Yes. My, so my question is, there's so many different denominations. There are so many different, um, uh, you know, doctrines, styles of worship. It's Is it easy in spite of all these denominations for us to come together in a city? All the local churches coming together. Yes, and we can. Why, Nelson? Why do you say yes? Because we all are born again Christians. We all are filled with the Holy Spirit. So, in that case. We are all born again Christians. Okay. Any other answers? Sorry? Yeah, uh, some churches they don't uh, uh, they don't believe in the manifestation of the Holy Spirit, signs, gifts, and you know miracles. The, Okay, but in, in respect of all that, how can we still come together? Lucy says we are all members of Christ. Yes. Who is our head? Not doctrines, right? It's Jesus. We have one head, right? We have God, Christ, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, who is the head, right? We have one Holy Spirit. How many Bibles, I mean, different versions of the Bible, but how many... We have just one Bible, right? And we have, these are all common denominators, right? There's only one cross, only one 
full sufficient perfect sacrifice that was made on the cross and that was done by Jesus we are all saved by the same blood whose blood the blood of Jesus okay and all of these are common factors we have the same foundation a foundation is we come together on the foundation of faith and not on doctrines our faith is we believe in one god father son and the holy spirit we believe in one holy spirit we believe in one cross we are all saved by the same blood of jesus we have the same bible all these are common basic factors that are of our faith and so it is we can come together irrespective of our various uh, doctrines our various styles of um, worship okay so we belong and we are all part of one body we're all members of christ okay we have one head we're all part of the same body we're just different parts of the same body but we belong to one body and yes it is possible for us to come and meet on these common grounds and see how we can work together okay uh, so when we come together we need to learn from other ministers okay men and women of god build fellowships uh, build strong relationships um, you know the word of god says uh, you know um, like iron sharpens iron one man sharpens the countenance of another man so you know when we come together fellowship we can learn from each other we can grow okay um and we've we've stated all the reasons why it is important for us to relate with other men and women of god okay um for us as ministers sometimes you know um it's it's very difficult as leaders and ministers for us to follow someone else yes or no yes because everybody's following us we find it very difficult to sometimes to follow um, others okay uh, and great leaders sometimes can be very poor followers okay why do you think they become poor followers huh why do you think we uh, leaders can become poor followers they don't want to follow others why what is the reasons come on okay pride yes uh, the i concept lucy was saying it's all about i me myself i know people should follow me i shouldn't be following others okay what else we are unwilling to cooperate with each other okay sometimes it can be arrogance okay uh, the true sign of greatness does not just lie in our ability to lead but also to follow others what happens when we also follow others as leaders yes you can learn from them um uh, kofi says they think they know it all yes sometimes we think we know it all we don't need to follow others we are great we have so many years of experience they shouldn't be teaching us okay um and we notice this especially you know when we have um, crusades and meetings where other pastors and other leaders come to that crusade and meeting and how is the reaction of some of these leaders who don't want to follow others what are their attitudes huh? pride and jealousy what is their attitude what is their action their reaction they neglect them if they don't give them the stage of seat of honor they get angry and leave okay if they don't get the front seat what happens they get very very upset and angry okay and they're not recognized they're not welcomed you know they won't sit or stand or if they you know when they're called up on the stage they won't go we've seen some of these attitudes and all of this is because hey you did not recognize me okay so when you did not recognize me i am not going to follow your 
instructions okay so it's important for us to also as leaders learn to follow others sanjay says we need a bit of humility we need to respect appreciate one another yes we need to appreciate and respect one another i don't think we need a bit of humility uh, we all have a little bit of humility i think we have need lo loads of humility for us to overcome this because it is you know sometimes very very difficult okay um what happens when leaders are not recognized for who they are when you don't get tell introduce them by their full name when you don't say reverend doctor so and so you know or right reverend so and so you know or you don't mention all their degrees or you don't acknowledge they are there in the crowd what happens they get upset they get angry right they don't want to do anything they'll just walk out of the meeting even if you call them on stage they won't come if you if they have to speak they'll use the, that time to get back and talk about humility and all of those things okay so what should be our um, what should be our mindset when we go to uh, places where we are not recognized or when we are just common among our other believers what should be our attitude huh we should be humble you should be humble how do you humble yourself at that time so how do you humble yourself at that time sorry for the background noise <laughs> we must understand that uh, we are same for god means we are same for god means we are all people. equal before god we are all same before god yes you can give him the mic he also wants to answer any more answers not to be served to serve others ma'am yeah not to be proud but to serve others just like jesus he came not to be served but to serve yes we have to be common we have to be common okay just be like other people okay what should be our mindset at that time like jesus like jesus yeah Actually, not to think of others not to think of others as lesser but to think of others as greater than us okay not to think of ourselves as lesser but others greater than us okay yes we should know why we are gathered here not to they are not here to worship me to worship but to worship god he gets all the reverence glory and honor right okay and also another important thing for us to know is our identity who we are in christ in christ when we all stand before god we are all standing on the same level right before god and also it is important for us to know that we are standing alongside with jesus who are we what have we done but god has given us that position that we stand beside jesus the same level we stand beside jesus so all of these things should not really matter for us the greater picture we need to see always look at the greater picture greater picture is god has made us to stand on the same level as jesus we are loved the same way as jesus is loved okay and that is who we are and that should become our identity okay even when we are ministering with others in fellowship we need to respect other people's gifts anointing in the ministry okay some churches you know they can be very loud in their way of worship they can be very dramatic hallelujah praise the lord amen people jumping people screaming uh, people clapping and some of us come from you know church services where we are uh, very quiet not even clapping i come from a denomination where uh, we can clap while we uh, sing worship songs but when somebody does something we we clap and look at us you know a very quiet form of worship nobody says hallelujah praise the lord amen nobody will lift their hands up and all that i come from a, 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 a denomination where it is 
a very you know sober kind of worship okay even you come from that okay some of us come from that okay so uh, we need to uh, Yes, things, stereotypes are breaking now. You know, people are also raising their hands and worshipping God in this kind of setup and also, you know, clapping and all of those things. But, you know, uh, we need to understand uh, and look at the fruit. Okay, don't judge people on, you know, their styles of worship and think that, oh, they're more powerful because all of them, them are jumping, screaming, hallelujah, praise the Lord, shaking, and the hands are this one, and they're shivering and all of those things, and there's a lot of noise. And you go to another congregation where there's very quiet worship, nobody's saying hallelujah, praise the Lord, nobody's lifting up their hands. It doesn't mean that they are not spiritual. Okay, I come from the church where the word of God is strongly preached. Many men and women have been raised up into full-time ministry. I am also one of them from that church. And I've grown spiritually in, and, you know, in the church where I grew up. And I thank God for the church. Okay, but uh, don't, uh, you know, um, uh, put those denominations in boxes and think they're not spiritual enough. We need to respect others' gifts anointing in the ministry okay sanjay says the enemy was insecure with which breathed arrogance unlike christ who knew his place and position yet never made a public show of it yes christ knew who he was what he had come to uh, do he did not look for power and position because he already knew he who he was his identity was so sure in who he was he was so grounded in his love for in the love of the father his intimacy with the father and so he knew why he came and he did what he had come to do okay the next thing is don't judge another man's servant okay let's read matthew chapter 7 verses 1 to 5 john 7 24 and uh yeah can two of you read that please matthew 7 1 to 5 and john 7 24 matthew 7 1 to 5 judge not that you be not judged for with what judgment you judge, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. And why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye, but do not consider the plank in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, let me remove the speck from your eye, and look, a plank is in your own eye. Hypocrite, first remove the plank from your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brothers. Amen. John 7, 24 and Romans 14, 4, 10 and 12. John chapter, 20, John chapter 7, 24. Do not judge according to appearance, but judge with righteous judgment. Who are you to judge another servant? To his own master he stands or falls. Indeed, he will be made to stand, for God is able to make him stand. But why do you judge your brother, or why do you show contempt to your brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ, for it is written. As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. So that each of us shall give account of his, himself to God. Okay. Amen. Thank you. So here we are asked not to judge, okay, condemn or criticize other women and men of God who are in the ministry. Okay. When we see them doing something wrong, should we judge them, condemn them and criticize them? No. Why shouldn't we do that? We are not supposed to judge others. Also, why should we not judge them? Who is the judge? God is the judge. They are accountable to God. So what should be our um, uh, attitude? Or our reaction when we see a man or woman of God or a leader doing something wrong? What should be our attitude? Or what should be our reaction? Sorry? Treat them um, well, treat them with respect, okay? Yeah, see them and respect them as anointed men and women of God, okay, who are placed by God in leadership. And what did you say else, Nelson? 
learn from their mistakes learn from their mistakes instead of judging and criticizing them because we can also fall in the same area okay and then what else can we do when we are asked whether they are doing right or wrong what should we do should we avoid answering lucy says speak to them yes speak to them when we ask whether they are doing something uh, right or wrong what should we do should we avoid it we should should we say i don't know come on give me some answers we should say yes what we think what they are doing is wrong uh, acknowledge but then also speak in grace and mercy with the goodness of god like paul says in romans the goodness of god leads people to repentance even when you like kofi says even when you confront them confront them in love okay ephesians says speaking the truth in love okay so why should we do it in love when the goodness of god so that the person can repent okay sometimes we think even when ministers have yeah we need to respect anointing that is on their lives yes one good example in the bible of somebody who respected others anointing ha huh? david yes david you know respected saul's anointing okay um and a, a good lesson to learn from david okay so we we see that you know sometimes we wonder why god uses a minister even though they are in sin why do you think god still uses them even though they have their own weaknesses sin no weaknesses right why god why does god still use them grace okay lucy says because of the grace of god the same very reason that god is still using me the same very reason that god is still using you we are not perfect but god still uses us and it is his grace okay so when we when we look at other the faults of other ministers should we gossip about it no what should we do we should talk about the good things about them okay be quiet about their failures okay uh when we we use their lives as an example don't mention their names okay suppose you're talking about a minister you're giving an example you know a, a, a man or woman of god has done such such thing has fallen into sin you want to give that as an example don't use their names don't give the details but just mention okay um but also you can still help them pray for them okay help them to come back to restoration okay uh, at the same time we need to when we do this we need to preserve our friendship and the well being of the uh, person and not gossip about that uh, person okay and restore them back to you know take the steps take the initiative to restore them pray for them deepu says sanjay also says pray for them yes you know and help them to get back on their feet it's important that you know uh, we help each other what happens when we help other fellow ministers who have fallen in sin who are going in the wrong what happens when we help them instead of laughing at them criticizing them mocking them you know uh, gossiping about them what happens if we take the time and initiative to restore them what happens they can come back and minister what else we are actually saving the body of christ right from uh, we are, we are also saving the body of christ from bad name uh, from being uh, defamed from people pointing mistakes the world pointing fingers at uh, the church making us as a laughing stock and also protecting the sheep you know they are looking after sheep so they we need to also consider the sheep imagine if the shepherd falls away what happens to the sheep sheep are really broken they're very sad and they can be led astray okay so instead of gossiping making fun pray about it get other men and women of god together so that you can um restore them okay and an important thing is even as we fellowship with each other in the body of christ it is important that we don't do things that will bring about strife and disunity and quarrel okay 
look at what Proverbs chapter 6, verse 16 says. Very, very powerful. It says, these six things the Lord hates, yes, and seven are an ab abomination to him. And what is that? One of them is a person who devises wicked plans and also a false witness, somebody who speaks lies and one who sows discord among brothers. So if you're somebody who is bringing, sowing discord, that means you are gossiping, talking bad about one person to another, you are you are trying to bring about disunity in the body of Christ, whether it's in a ministry, in the church, in your, uh, uh, you're part of a team in the church, you're serving the church, and you're trying to bring about discord, you know what the word of God says? God hates it. And it's an abomination to I mean, something that is very detestable. God cannot stand it. And can you imagine how much we are going against God? Okay. So don't sow discord among brothers and sisters in the body of Christ, even in the family, even in your workplace. That is something that God hates and is an abomination to um, him. So what should we do when there is a discord? When you have an issue with another brother, what should you do? Talk about it with others, gossip about it with others, tell how bad they are, how unfit they are. What should you do? Huh? Come on, what should we do? Can we have some solve it, speaking to them? Thank you, Lucy. What else? Resolve the matter with them. Okay, what else? If they're not listening, what should you do? Reconcile with them, yes. If they're not listening, what should you do? Get other people involved so that others can speak to them, OK? Um, and another important to keep in mind is when you are gossiping about others, who is also listening to us? Huh? God, OK? Paul tells, I think Paul tells um, Titus or Timothy, you know, um, uh, be very careful because he, uh, Paul is writing to Timothy. He's saying, be very careful how you speak about others because uh, Jesus, uh, the Lord Jesus and the, and the angels are listening to your conversation. Okay. The Lord Jesus and the angels are your witnesses to what you are speaking so i think it is very very important for us what we are speaking what we are talking about others behind that back because god himself is listening to us and the angels are also listening to us and he's a silent listener to every conversation okay so as people in the body of christ is important for us to fellowship with others build strong relationship um, you know commune with others um, sharing to uh, uh, sharing our lives with each other so that we can bring about transformation. Okay, now God is not interested in or impressed by the size of your ministry, how many places you preached, how many books you've written, what is the rep your reputation, your achievements, you know, what is the fan following you have, how many likes you have on YouTube for your um, messages, you know, how many followers you have. All that is not what is going to impress uh, God, okay? All of these are important. He's also not impressed by your titles, your degrees, all the, uh, you know, appreciation that you receive from um, men and women. Nothing is going to impress God. But, you know, what is in, uh, in going to really impress him is whether, what is going to impress the heart of God? What is going to impress the heart of God? Sorry, what is going to really please the heart of God? It's not all of these things which I mentioned, but what is really going to please the heart of God? Come on, what is going to please the heart of God? Obeying him, thank you, Nelson. What else? Humility, faithful, enduring, righteous, faithful, what else? Doing the will of God. And above all, unity. You know, 
In the high priestly prayer in John chapter 17, Jesus prayed, Father, let them be one as we are one. He didn't say, Father, let them flow in the power that we have. Father, let them be mighty like we are mighty. Let them be all powerful like we are all powerful. But what does he say, Father, let them be one as you know, we are one because Jesus knew that in unity lies anointing, strength, power, and breakthrough in ministry. Okay, so that is very, very important. So please keep this in mind. Unity is very, very important in the body of Christ, and we are all earthen vessels. Okay, uh, uh, and His grace and His anointing will flow through our lives when we are in one mind, in unity, and when our mindset is, God, I want to build your kingdom, I want to obey you, I want to do your will, I want to let down my pride, I'm willing to forgive that brother or sister, willing to work with them, I'm willing to partner with them to see your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Okay, so keep this in mind always. Unity is very, very important when you try to maintain unity in your team the power of god will flow and god can do great and mighty things um, uh, with you otherwise it will be a downfall of your life your ministry and your calling okay any questions on this chapter any questions on this chapter no okay uh, In-person students, any questions? Online students, any questions? Okay, there are no questions. We'll move on to chapter 9, money. Okay, is money an important part of Christian ministry? Yes. Oh, that's a loud answer. <laughs> okay, why is money important in Christian ministry? Without money, you can't do anything, okay? We can help uh, other churches to build. We can help other churches. Will you really help other churches? Yes, ma'am. That's a big question. Yeah, when, you get, <laughs> when you get all the money, what happens? Pride. Pride? What happens when you have pride? When you have your own church, you have your own building, everything is set in your church, and you're getting more money, what happens? Lucy says greed. So, do you think, hey, I can give this money for somebody else to build a church? Come on, honestly tell me. What will you think? I will think, let's build another set, another floor so that we can have children's church there, another floor to have youth ministry there, parking lot, this, that, right? I can use this money to put a good uh, LED screen to em enhance my church. There's a lot of noise coming from outside. Let's make it fully AC, you know, so we can think of all this. I mean, I, we can hardly think of, hey, let me give this money to other people, okay? So what should be our focus? Sometimes it can get to greed, Sister Gertrude says, to build the kingdom of God. Yes, we need to use our money to even build the kingdom of God. I like what uh, our APC does, you know. We don't have our own church. We don't have our own property, our own land. But, you know, uh, we invest into other churches. We give them to enhance the church. They build their church to buy property. I think that's it's so wonderful because pastor's mindset is to build the kingdom of God, not just to build um, APC, okay? Now, um, so our focus should be on the Lord and his call and take our attention off money, okay? Now, uh, Paul tells Timothy, the love of money is the root of all evil, okay? The love for money is the root of all uh, evil, okay? How do you know that you have love for money? How do you know that you have love for money? When you're always thinking about money, yes. Well, how else you think that? How else you know you have love for money? As a minister of God, hey, if I go there and preach in that church, they'll give me good offering. If I go to this church, a small church, poor church, 
they might not give me, so I'll tell them I'm busy, I can't come. But I can't miss this big church. You know, big offering will come. Let me go and preach. Okay. We'll stop here. Um, Deepu says, you know, uh, Sanjay says, uh, you trust in money more than trusting in God. Get to says, when you are hoarding money, yes, keeping the money for yourself. Deepu says, ready to do anything for money. Yes, that's so true. We are ready to do anything for money that can be very, very dangerous. That, that's one way we know that we have love for money or we are holding back money is another way. And when we trust in money, then trusting in God. Okay, we'll take a break now and we'll come back and we'll talk about money. <laughs> Thank you.